Hello, Lynn. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm really good, thank you very much. Um, I'm having a nice day. Welcome to my studio. Yes, thank you. It's great to see you again. I mean, I have had the honor to actually hang out in your studio when we filmed your class for Exploring. And uh, soon everyone else in Sketchbook School gets the chance to hang out with you. So, um, well, a lot of people in Sketchbook School have asked for you again and again That's to lovely please to be part of the faculty. <laughs> and now you are. So, And I am very excited about that too. Um, so a lot of people already know you, but for the people who don't, maybe you can introduce yourself. Right. Well, um, I'm somebody who's been drawing for as long as I can remember. Um, I just enjoy playing. I enjoy experimenting. I enjoy trying as many different things as I can. Um, and I'm very, very lucky that as well as something that's a, a, a hobby that I fill a lot of my free time with, it's also my job. So I've always managed to make my living from my drawing and painting in different ways. So mostly um, I've been an illustrator uh, most of my life. And uh, and that's been in all sorts of different ways. I've illustrated picture books. I've illustrated um, for magazines, newspapers. Um, I've now, in recent times, become um, a reportage artist. I've started to get paid for actually sketching in my sketchbook, which is really interesting. So I've been artist in residence with various uh, academics. So it's been very, very exciting. And I just love the fact that I've had so many different kind of takes on it really over the years keeps it fun keeping that development going that is just so interesting about sketchbook keeping and so with that reportage drawing would that also be urban sketching or is that something different yes it's interesting um i think for the most part it is the same as urban sketching um, I'm doing very much the same thing that I'm doing when I'm out urban sketching for my own enjoyment. Um, what's different about it, of course, is that the subject matter is directed and I'm aware of the areas of interest of the people that I'm working for. So whereas if I was urban sketching and I was sat in a particular environment, my attention can shoot off to anything that catches my eye and, and I can go off and do my own thing. Whereas when I'm working, um, I know that I'm not drawing that dog that just walked by. <laughs> I'm actually supposed to be concentrating on what's over there. Sometimes drawing that dog that's just walked by is part of it. Um, and I, my role is, I suppose, to, to make that judgment about how much it's about context and how much it's about focus. And what's been really fun is the people I've been working with have always just trusted me to do that. Um, almost no direction. They just sort of let me get on with it. Um, so it's been really nice to be able to kind of choose how I interpret what's going on. That's fantastic. It is really, really exploring every situation you're in and then finding a way to capture the situation, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's been interesting because one of the difficulties with it has been that um, quite a lot of it has been about people, which is fine for me because I love drawing people. Um, but I was very aware of the fact that it's quite easy for it to become quite samey to look at. So one of the things I've had to do is explore different ways of looking at drawing people and different ways of interpreting some of the things they're talking about. A lot of it might be, you know, you're sat in a room and a bunch of people get up and say stuff. If you're not careful, that could look, look extremely boring. So trying to find interesting graphic ways to show text. You know, if somebody says something, you know, it could be a speech bubble or it could be sort of twirly all around them or, you know, there's all sorts of different techniques that I kind of played with um, particularly last year when I had a whole year with one university so I had a lot of time to think about it and to sort of develop new things new ways of doing things yes, and that's what I really love about um, your class 
you really teach that specific thing. You show how you can depict time on a page or in a sketchbook or on different pages. Um, you um, capture like a whole huge place. How can you capture that in your sketchbook? You have some really great tips about that. And even how to draw someone's portrait in a whole different way. It's, it's, I think it's spectacular and it's amazing. And it gives so many ideas of how you can do things in your sketchbook, how you can tell stories in your sketchbook, even if you're not that accomplished drawer. I think that's very important because um, a lot of people worry too much, in my opinion, about their skill level. And people focus on the final thing. So they draw something and then they, they look at what they've drawn and they're disappointed and so they consider themselves a failure and often they don't do it again um, or they get very anxious every time they do it. And what I constantly am trying to, to share with people is the fact that it's about what's going on in your head really. You just sort of shift your focus because the whole point of the thing is to have fun. And if you concentrate on what you're doing and in being in the moment and enjoying the process of doing it, actually the thing you end up with at the end is a very minor part of the whole thing. If you think more about the fun and the pleasure of the actual act and less about your own kind of shortcomings, um, it becomes quite liberating. That is part of the a big part of your class as well. Is there anything in particular, apart from this, that you hope that people take away from your class, that they learn from you? I think one of the things for me um, that kind of happens, oh, I'm trying to remember when it happens now, it's a few years ago, but I've been drawing all my life, so in the scheme of things, relatively recently, um, I got very inspired when I joined Urban Sketches and I started to see some of the other possibilities of what you could do. I used to draw mainly with a 3D pencil, which is fun and it's fine. But I think one of the things I'd like to get across is that a sketchbook is somewhere where you can experiment. And so one of the dangers, I think, is that you learn how to use a tool and you get you know, competent with it and then it feels very scary to do anything else because you spent so long learning how to use this pen. If I now go try watercolour, I'm going to be really rubbish again. So you end up doing the one thing. And there's so much more that you can have fun with. And so one of the things I've been trying to get across in my class is that a lot of it's about trying new things and just seeing what happens. And playing around and combining materials and, and looking at the format. I mean, one of the things we're going to talk about is this concertina of paper that I've got really excited about um, in recent times. And I had concertina sketchbooks on, on my shelf that sat there for years and I was terrified of them because the whole, it's all part of one big long thing. And so if you make a mistake, oh, you've ruined it. it know, it's just yeah. awful. And I just couldn't touch them. And then one day I just took myself in hand and thought, stupid idiot, you know, just to start. And once I started, I never looked back. And it's such an exciting format. It, again, changes everything. It makes you explore different things. So that process of exploration is what I get the joy from. And I, I'm, what I hope is that I can get that across to people through my class and liberate them too. And so that they feel less afraid, really, and just get on with it, <laughs> get on with it, join themselves. What I took uh, with me after shooting your class, I was like, I so want to use that concertina sketchbook that's on my shelf for three years already. <laughs> and I did. And it is liberating. It's just like when you buy a very um, beautiful sketchbook with beautiful pages, watercolor pages, and you're like, oh, this is so precious because, you know, it's quite expensive. Just go for it, you know? And if you don't, just go for one with that's less ex uh, expensive and just throw anything in there. But um, I think it is really liberating to let go of the idea that it has to be perfect. If it isn't, 
you get another chance, you know, or just the next page. I hope that in your class, everybody is going to make their own concertinas or get a concertina sketchbook and, and just create awesome stuff. I mean, your class is super inspiring and it's going to be amazing and people are really looking forward to it. So we'll just have to wait for a little longer. Um, in the meantime, do you have any tips or advice? Do people need to um, prepare in a certain way for your class or anything like that? I don't think there's anything that people need to do in advance. I think um, one of the, you mentioned storytelling and one of the things that I think perhaps comes through from the work that I do when I'm illustrating children's books, one of the things that I've, has kind of bled into my urban sketching is this idea of storytelling. Um, and I used to think of my sketchbook as a series of pages and therefore a series of single snapshots that had nothing to do with one another. And when I started to use the concertinas, I, I started to think about this idea of storytelling and that life isn't one thing. You know, it's it, everything does bleed together. Um, so if there's anything you can do in advance, I think it's just start to be more aware of the little stories around you. They're not big things. The most interesting stuff often isn't the big stuff. It's just the little tiny narratives that run through your everyday life. You know, just putting on the washing machine. It's a story. Um, and actually it's quite colorful, visually. <laughs> so just, just kind of, you know, think about it. Think about all the different environments that you move through during your time and yeah, the tiny weeny little stories that you've got to tell. So, so when it comes to it, and you've got your lovely new concertina ready, you've got loads of stuff to go at. That sounds like a, like good advice anyway. So, um, well, I am really, really looking forward to your class. Can't wait to do my homework. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. We'll see you in class. Absolutely. It's so exciting. <laughs> see you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>